If pain is more real than anything else, what's even more real than pain is whatever we have to fight off the pain. And that's free speech. It's identical with freedom of thought. It's associated with this capacity and necessity to listen deeply. They're flip sides of the same coin, to use a terrible cliché. And all the clinical data we have, including the more stringently research-oriented clinical inquiry, indicates quite clearly that the the exchange of information like that, the generation of, of, of semantic and emotional information in a state of relative freedom, the revelation of those thoughts, and then the discursive analysis of those thoughts, say, and then the implementation into action and the testing of them, that is the pathway to health insofar as that can be attained by, say, psychological or spiritual means. And so that's why free speech is not just another freedom or right among many. It's certainly not viewpoint diversity or anything like that. It's the the mechanism by which we generate the conceptions that allow us to organize our experience in the world. It's that mechanism. And more than that, it's the mechanism that allows us to reformulate and criticize those conceptions when they've become outdated and sterile to dissolve them into a chaos that we have to contend with while it's occurring and then to reanimate them in a new form so that we can move into the future.